Today's video is gonna be a little shorter than usual. Um, it's not a regular vlog. I thought that um, I would share with you the issues that we're kind of uh, facing right now. Uh, Sophie, our goat, you might recall her. She, uh, she was the goat. Oh, I hear her. She was actually the goat that kitted recently in the vlog. She had the two little bucklings and she was doing good. Uh, she had dropped some weight and she started rejecting one of the kids. So we decided for all three of them, the best course of action would be to go ahead and pull them off of her. So we pulled them off of her. Um, I started working on drying her off. I brought her back out to the pasture and she was doing good. And then she started to have diarrhea. Whatever I had her here, I was actually, I had started her on some supplemental grain um, slowly and incrementally, because that's how you do. You don't want to upset the rumen. You can cause issues in the rumen if you uh, give them too much new food at once. And so um, I had her on some grain. She had free choice hay. And whenever she developed this diarrhea out of the pasture, my first thought was, okay, maybe she um, was just a little stressed out of the stress of uh, not only the birth, but also the weaning and the separation and the n new location. Maybe she developed some coccidia um, because the thing is you can deworm goats and cows but they are gonna always have a very light load of worms. And that's okay, that's actually normal, that's natural, you just don't want them to get overloaded. So um, goats and cows tend to have a very small uh, amount of worms and such in their system, that's just, that's normal. And um, so whenever stress happens, they can, their immune system can become weakened and they can get overloaded. So I, that was my first thought, so I immediately started treating her. I hear her in the trailer. <laughs> oh, that was a normal, that was good, that was good. Um, so I, um, she wasn't improving, so I started, I was, I was treating for the diarrhea. <clears throat> um, so she was giving, getting electrolytes, um, I dewormed her, um, and um, I gave her, I was giving her probiotic paste, yogurt, um, started fermenting uh, beet pulp because beet pulp is a uh, digestible fiber, which is what you need in their rumen. And, um, and nothing was doing it, nothing was doing it. Nothing was, nothing was fixing it. So I started to have a thought a week into treating I wonder if this is acidosis, which you, if this is a scenario for you, definitely consult with your vet because um, I had experience with it in the past so I knew what to look for. So definitely still consult with your vet before. So this is not like medical advice. I'm just telling you what I experienced and what I did to help you identify the signs to catch it in time because all of the symptoms are lining up with acidosis. We had dealt with acidosis in our old steer, Big Mac, and we had successfully recovered him. And basically what acidosis is, is acidosis is, I don't wanna say it's like a broad blanket term, but basically what happens is the rumen becomes too acidic for them to digest food, the beneficial bacteria in their gut die off and you get a bloom or an, it be just the rumen becomes overrun with bad bacteria and because there's no good bacteria, the rumen can't function properly and basically the food just sits there and rots and the bad bacteria just becomes prolific and it can kill. It basically, you'll see your, your, your goat or your cow will go from being perfectly healthy weight to thin as can be very fast. And that was how we caught it with Big Mac was we came out to the pasture and he was super thin, like very quickly. Um, but he was on grass. That was, that was a special circumstance. That was, that was a very rare occurrence. It's very uncommon for a cow that's been grass fed to develop acidosis, but it, it, it can happen. That, that's, that's another story. So once I started thinking that it might be acidosis in, in Sophie, I immediately started treating her for it. The sun moved, so I had to move. So the second that I figured out that it's probably acidosis, I started treating her for it. Um, 
because all of the symptoms were there. Um, so I started off, the first thing that I did was I took and I drenched her with baking soda uh, water um, because t what you want to do is the first thing you have to do before you can start any other treatment is you've got to get the pH of the rumen, rumen back up because no matter how much probiotic paste you give them, if the rumen is too acidic, it, they'll just die off. So um, I drenched her with back uh, with um, and this is I, I confirmed with the vet this is the proper protocol. So so I started treating her with baking soda. I drenched her with that to try and get the pH up, kill off some of the bad bacteria, and then I started immediately with the probiotic paste, and the vet confirmed that I can give her probiotic paste daily. Um, he's like, I don't think you can overdose on probiotic paste, so I was giving her that probiotic paste. I gave her a B-complex paste. I also gave her yogurt. I was giving her yogurt as well. Um, unsweetened plain yogurt, that is the big thing, can be Greek yogurt or regular yogurt. And so I was giving her that and she was eating. She was still eating, she was eating hay. I, so I was giving her as much hay as she could possibly eat. I separated her from the herd and she was still declining. And sometimes you can't really measure it until it's like really, really bad. So I, once it got to the point where she was starting to lose interest in food, I reached out to the vet. I went over everything I was doing and he said, and I was like, is there anything that you guys would do that I'm not, could do that I'm not doing? And he said, there's two things. He goes, there's one thing. He's like, you're doing everything that we would be doing. Um, you're doing good. Um, he said, one thing that I haven't heard you try is activated charcoal. He's like, try giving her some activated charcoal. And I was like, okay, all right. So I started giving her activated charcoal because charcoal actually will absorb toxins in the gut. So I started giving her some activated charcoal. I'm actually waiting on more to come because I can't find mine. I had to borrow some from a friend. But so did that and then he said the only other thing that we could do is to tube her and fill her room in they've got this it's like a nutrient drench kind of like if you're giving a person iv fluids that have all the nutrients that they need they would just tube they tube the goat or the cow and they fill the room in and in the i guess in the process of them filling the room in and stretching the room in it kind of activates it and can sometimes induce an improved an, imp an improved appetite. Brought the vet out and he uh, went over things. Uh, he checked her for matcha, which we I, I had been checking and I actually, it was actually better than I thought. I, he actually showed me a better way to check it. So um, she was a three on the matcha score, which is not bad but not good. It's in that, that gray area of she could use a deworming, but we don't think that's what's causing this. So we went ahead and dewormed her as a precaution. And, um, cause we don't, we don't deworm our goats unless they need it. We basically try to use preventative practices because you don't want to treat your goats monthly or on like a schedule because that's how you develop resistant parasites. And so, so he went ahead and he dewormed her as a preventative to try and help, gave her an iron shot, and also gave her a B-complex injection, which he actually suggested I give her a B-complex injection. He was telling me about uh, in, in B-complex um, solutions for goats and cows, they have thiamine in it, which actually is a key vitamin or mineral that is uh, very important in the rumen for it to actually work properly. So he did that, and then we tubed her and filled her rumen which I was kind of hopeful because before we did that, she actually got up and was showing interest in food, which was like, good, this is good. Not because at some point, them not eating over the course of a period of time, at some point their rumen is going to stop functioning. And that's kind of the point of no return. So yesterday, whenever I saw her pretty much not showing interest in food, I called the vet and was talking with them. So, um, I have, like I said, she's swallowing, so I didn't need a tuber. I've been giving her yogurt and uh, probiotic paste. I know it's overloading, but at this point I'm like, you need so much good bacteria in your gut. Let's go check on her actually. So the vet visit went good. We tubed her, 
put, um, I think he put like a gallon in her room and because she's, she's so small. She's not a, she's not a large goat. She's, I, she, she's, she's more dwarfish. So let's see how she's doing. Hi baby. She's being more vocal than she has been. You know what? I'm, I know, honey. Her throat's probably a little sore from the tube because you have to feed it down their throat all the way into their stomach. It sucks. Hey, honey. I know, baby. I know, honey. I'm so sorry we gotta do all this, but you're gonna. F we're hoping this, this is to help you feel better. Hey. Do you want some of your hay? your hair right here <laughs> that's so sweet girl i know you're full right now so you're probably not interested in anything but hopefully poor baby i feel so bad for her i know honey i know this is definitely more vocal she's being she's more vocal than she has been since she's been here so that's i hope that's good i hope that's a good sign so She's she's drinking. That's something I didn't mention. She is drinking on her own. So I've got her set up with electrolyte and probiotic mix water so that she's staying hydrated. That's one of the biggest things you've got to be careful about whenever they develop diarrhea like that is they, they can become dehydrated and that can be what actually kills them. So the vet, he came out, did that and at this point that's all we really can do he said um, he's gonna have me start giving her uh, daily injections of vitamin B complex just to help try and get her more energy get her room and working better and hopefully she recovers from this so that's kind of why I've been a little bit I didn't post last week, I was down with a migraine, but I've been working on trying to care for her. So I've not really, I've not had as much time to vlog. I was more focused on that. So hopefully, oh, hopefully she recovers. She's been quiet. So hearing her, hearing her bleat, that's, I mean, that's a little hopeful to me. That's probably the most alert she's alert like she's not like she, she's sitting in a corner she's obviously not feeling well but when i come in she still looks at me and she reaches her head she, she she likes to reach her head out and give me kisses which i'm like i'm sorry honey i can't accept kisses you're, you're a mess right now and i've been trying to wash her off but i don't want to wash her too often because goats hate water and i don't want to stress her out i want to try and keep her stress levels as low as possible so hopefully she recovers I'll keep you guys posted she's not happy with us I don't blame her uh, keep Sophie in your prayers please pray for us and for Sophie